What's up, Simonics? Welcome to our monthly Ionic News Show episode, October 2020. Since the last time we had this show, a lot of content was released both inside the Ionic Academy on my main blog and also on the Ionic official blog where I also appeared and as well we saw a new release for a different framework. It's still a beta, but perhaps at this point it's maybe already out because I'm very optimistic that we will soon see the stable release. As usual, we will go through all the content now and if you got anything to share or anything specific that you wanna highlight as well, leave a comment below with something that I haven't mentioned that you think is very or was very important during the last time. But for now, let's get into it. As always, I also want to keep you up to date with everything going on inside the Ionic Academy because it's basically behind this uh, subscription and you might not see it from the outside, but there's something happening every month, like a new course on using the movie database, a great course diving into API interaction uh, using a lot of observable and RxJS stuff, in general just creating a very cool UI for this uh, movie database. Also, uh, the second other course is a capacitor photo book, which used to some degree uh, a few of the components Matt Netco from Ionic has in its uh, in the beginner tutorial for capacitor. But we create this cool UI, basically like the Photos app on iOS, where you can have different albums, uh, add images to albums, using models, uh, storing files locally, and of course on the web as well. So another huge course on some of the capacitor core APIs. Additionally, new quick wins that you might have missed, one about uh, OCR using Tesseract, we had this in the past, you requested it many times. Um, it works kinda okay, I wasn't super happy with the result because sometimes it didn't really work, but in a lot of cases uh, the capturing process of OCR actually worked pretty great, so check it out if you're interested in OCR. Also, um, the camera preview is something a lot of people might need, because I get a lot of questions, how can I add specific elements to the camera UI and that's usually not possible with the general uh, Cordova camera plugin. But if you're using the camera preview, you can do all kinds of things. You can, as we can see here, you can just add your own image, a little ionic overlay icon, you can add your own buttons. Really, you can do everything that you want and that's exactly what you need in those cases. Also. Uh, a quick tutorial, a quick win on using the device contact with Capacitor, which actually works a lot better than the Cordova plugin, so this was really a lot faster. Also finally new inside the Academy, so you see a lot of content uh, has been going on inside the Academy, how to hide the header on scroll. This was a really interesting tutorial uh, using a custom, I think, directive or component, as you can see in this little animation to uh, either fade out the header or in the other case fade in the header. I saw this in the Airbnb application and I really enjoyed this UI. Um, and as you can see, you can really do everything with Ionic. The animations API helps to do these kind of things. Now on my main blog, interesting tutorials. I think this might be actually one of my favorite things, how to build your own capacitor plugin because it is really super easy. Um, there's a template for capacitor plugins that you can get started with and then you just write your own functions uh, for the web as well. Everything is really detailed in this article and then we also move into some iOS implementation that I somehow made work with a few Swift tutorials and also the Android code uh, for the Java code. Really. This is basically like the um, context plugin for Capacitor we use, but this is everything you need to create your own Capacitor plugin and it's really super easy and the workflow, I really enjoyed this tutorial. Also two tutorials on Firebase functionalities, one on using Firebase analytics if you want to add some analytics to your application and another one on using the web push notifications. Quick clarification. It sounds great having push notifications inside a progressive web app, but everything you see in this tutorial only works on Android. For iOS, there's uh, still not the possibility to use push notifications inside a progressive web app, but on the web and Android, this works great. And this might be, well, it's challenging if this or the capacitor plugin is my favorite one. 
Uh, it's a full template on building your own lock-in flow with guards, uh, with tabs area, so navigation inside, um, building an actual nice lock-in screen, having an introduction page, using guards in really cool ways. Everything is in this tutorial. It's really a big template and I'm working on more templates because I noticed that you really like this kind of tutorial. Um, and quite new is another essential guide on image zooming. Image zooming um, doesn't work maybe like you think it works. There's no zoom controller or anything like this, but we can use the Ionic slides to create a cool zoom animation. And also within the tutorial, I wanted to do something like you can see in the Instagram app where you basically have a feed, which comes up now, and you can directly go into this feed into the images. Um, actually, I think this was pretty cool as well. Now, in terms of new uh, Ionic official content, well, oops, looks like I'm on that block as well. <laughs> um, I created another tutorial. Uh, this came from a question we had in the Ionic Conf about navigating in Ionic mode, since they live basically above your application, they're outside of the Angular router, and there's a custom Ion nav component that you can use for these cases where you usually don't have routing in place. And this tutorial shows you everything, how to navigate inside a model with different levels using that component. And I'm happy to be on that block as well again. Then in terms of new Ionic news, the new Ionic View beta is out. And I think because our View 3 was recently released like two weeks ago, I think we will pretty see, soon see a stable version of Ionic View as well. I gave this a try in one of the last videos, you can check it out. I'm not yet sure about Vue because I really like Angular and I didn't find too many benefits of using Vue yet. I think it's easier to get started with, it's quite easy to set up your project and get started and it's great that Ionic works with Vue by now. But at this point, I'm actually maybe even more interested in checking out React uh, since I think it's more mature than Vue. Um, not that Vue is bad in any kind of way, but it feels like a little tiny step back for me at this point. But if you are uh, used Vue in the past, definitely check it out, give it a try, go through this post. Um, they also have a little quick guide on getting started, it's really quite easy. Also, uh, something I usually don't highlight. Uh, news about AppFlow, the paid service from Ionic, but I really think this is a great addition to AppFlow, Web Preview. I wanted to add this to my own projects in the past as well, but of course it's not that easy. Basically you need to build the application in the background and host the uh, output folder somewhere so people can share the link and view it in their browser. And they now included this in WebFlow. I think that is a great addition. Uh, maybe in the future I can make this work with my project as well. Um, so if you're using AppFlow, check out this great addition. And also quickly note on this because it was recently updated. Still, if you get deprecation warnings about UI WebView, um, just search for UI WebView on the Ionic blog or this exact error code that you get on iOS. Um, they now updated this guide to include alternatives for plugins that still use the view i web view in here. Um, I think starting December or yeah, like, uh, whatever, pretty soon, I think Apple won't accept uh, any applications with the UI web view reference in them anymore. So make sure your apps are prepared when you're doing an update. In general news, uh, we're at version 5.3.4. Um, this doesn't really reference the Ionic view. I think that's more like a beta somewhere. Um, as usual, a lot of bug fixes, a bit of performance improvements. Um, I don't know when we will see version 6. I actually haven't heard any news about version 6 or what should be included. So I'm at this point really happy that we're still on version 5 and I don't have to uh, migrate my app once again. But of course, in the future, all the migration will be a lot easier. So that's our current version. Update your apps if you're anyway on version 5. Of course, uh, you can still get my book Practical Ionic. I haven't added this too much because I'm not a huge fan of too much marketing. I just wanted to let you know. Of course, after the launch, it's still sale. Uh, people still buy this every week. It's a great book to get into Ionic, Firebase and Capacitor and build a really powerful application. So check it out, devdectic.com slash practical minus Ionic. And finally, in terms of my own projects, for the next time I have planned a lot of content. 
Uh, I have a huge private project going on, which will consume a lot of time, but I also definitely finally want to get back into Kickoff Ionic pretty soon. I've now created a list of new things I want to add. And of course, if you have used it, uh, let me know what you think about it or otherwise give it a try, kickoffionic.com. You can start it for free and of course you can let me know anything that you notice and I'm really happy about any feedback on this project. All right, and that's it again for our Ionic News Flash. I hope you enjoyed this episode, uh, keeping you up to date with everything going on around the Ionic framework in general, uh, specific content and important news. So you always stay up to date and can build the best possible apps using Ionic. You might have noticed that I kind of reduced the frequency of these videos. As I said in one of my last videos, I really want to focus on Ionic at this point. So Ionic News Flash, Ionic Review uh, 4, which I'm actually collecting new applications. If you have released any Ionic application in the past, please leave a link below and let me know uh, where I can find it, how I can log in, how I can use it so I can create a new Ionic app review pretty soon for you. As always, thanks for watching. Please make sure that you leave a like and comment and subscribe to the channel as usual for more great Ionic tutorials, vlog episodes and everything covering your favorite framework. Have a great week with some of the Ionic updates. Perhaps check out one of the tutorials that you've seen or otherwise update to the latest Ionic version would be a good idea for this week as well. Have a great week of happy coding and Simon. Have a happy week of coding. Uh... Have a great week of happy coding. I will catch you pretty soon. Simon.